Ladies first. Hi, I'm Jade Jackson. Hi, I'm Mike Ness. My new record, Gilded, is out now, produced by uh, Mike here. We are at uh, Paramount Studios. Paramount Studios in Hollywood. Talking about where a record. We, yeah, where we did some recording and all the mixing in this room right here. How did we meet? Well, it, star it started with me in my apartment my junior year of college, just going about my business, and then I get this phone call from a random number, and I picked up. I was like, hey, this is Mike Ness, and I was like, no, it's not. Wait, how did I say that? Really? <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> like, you introduced yourself, and I'd been listening to your music since I was a kid. When I was 13, I went to my first concert without my parents, and uh, it was a social distortion concert back in my hometown. I mean, I was really excited for it. My dad had an old Social D t-shirt that I begged him to let me borrow, and he ended up giving it to me. I cut it up, kind of made it my own, and just kind of went down there and stood there by myself. Um, I was always kind of shy, didn't have a lot of friends, but um, for some reason when I was there, I, just something started igniting in me. And when Mike walked out on stage and the way he talked to the crowd and made everybody feel a part of the show and had like that control up there, I just, I was like, wow, like that he has this voice that I want to have someday. And it just got me thinking. I got, I went home, I started writing. Well, first I picked up the guitar, I started writing songs, and it really just propelled me uh, in the musical direction of wanting to do it for a career. And then, I don't know, I feel like it's just a weird, like, serendipity mm -hmm. story that... Yeah, so flash forward. Flash forward now. Yeah, I'm, you know, my wife is good friends with your mom. They grew up together. Mm -hmm. Christine had been, my wife Christine had been hounding me to, you need to work with Jade, you need to work with Jade. And I'd seen you play, but only just, you know, by yourself, you know, at a dinner, you know, I think it was a party, you know, for her dad. And it was hard oh. to, it was hard to watch you perform because I think, I don't know if I had some tasks or if I was just, you know. I think I was literally too, like in a corner, like yeah. with my head down playing guitar. And I, I had forgotten but about she that. Kept you know, hounding me to, and then at this point you had some demos made, so I finally, uh, we were driving in her car, listened to the demos, and I was like, dang, there's just some really good stuff here, and that's when I made the decision, I called you up, and said I'd like to work together, and we made some demos, uh, at Red Star, the demos got her signed to Anti, and uh, now we're touring together. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Okay, so Troubled End is on the new record, and um, the song has a story because the first band, well I think it was the second band I was in, but when I was 15 I was in a rockabilly band, uh, we were called the Rural Wreckers. I had been writing songs at that point for a couple years and I wrote a song for the band and I brought it to the two guys in my band and played it and they really liked it and we put it in our set and we ended up doing a little demo of it. And that's the version that Mike heard, um, the recording that we did when I was 15. Um, I'm not even sure how you heard that. Or where Christine actually remembered it. Okay. Yeah, but we were looking for some, you know, uh, versatility in the record and making the record. You know, we had good, you know, country songs. We had good. I felt that we needed some upbeat stuff, and I, and uh, Christine had remembered that song. And when I heard it, I was like, "That's perfect." You know, but she was 15 when she wrote it, and I just felt like it needed. A, we, we did some arrangement stuff with it, uh, minor arrangement stuff, and mainly the lyrical thing, you know, I had this title, title Troubled End, and I just wanted to make sure that the lyrics uh, 
depicted that title. And what we did keep was great, though. Hmm. Yeah, we, I feel like we kind of did rework it, pretty much. Yeah. Because the original ver uh, title was called Trouble's End. It was more of like oh, yeah. a... Hap, like not happy, but just more of an optimistic kind of tr troubles are yeah. ending. And Mike's like, hmm, it what sounds, if we said troubled instead yeah, of troubles? It just, the song, the chords in it, the, the feel, it just felt like it was like a dangerous mm -hmm. kind of rock and roll song. And so that's that's the feeling it evoked in me. Yeah. And, but that was a fun one to do. That I was... really liked the, the breakdown. Where it just goes into that kind of like, you know, burlesque kind of showtime oh, yeah. groove, and it, it, people really like that. So that one, we ended up re-recording um, everything except for the vocals for that one here. I remember you teaching me about like, you know, just how to like make your little space when you're recording vocals. But I just for some reason remember that day in particular because I was looking at you through the glass and you were like instructing me, and then I hit that mm -hmm. last note that wasn't originally mm -hmm. in the song. Mm -hmm. And so we sort of created things on the spot in the mm -hmm. studio together. And Definitely. You know, producing and making a record, it's all about just getting performances out of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though they don't really know what you're trying to do, Jade was great to work with because she just trusted me. And I just said, just uh, a little bit more energy or a little bit more. She hadn't really played with loud drums and loud guitars in a long time. and and. Um, so it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Though. It was yeah. really fun, and yeah, I, he kept saying like I was easy to work with because I was, you know, listening to him. But for me, I was like, I can't even believe you're wanting to work with me. Like, <laughs> like I'll do it, you know. Like I just look up to you so much with your music and everything that you've done. It was just an honor to to be a Thank part you. of it. Yeah. yeah. Line was one of the original songs that you had heard from that demo mm -hmm. that I did with my friends. Because um, when Mike called me initially to want to work with me, you hadn't heard that demo yet that you were talking right. about. You, he actually was wanting to help me record a demo, and I was like, "Well, I just, I just kind of did one. Um, like I think it was like a couple weeks before you mm -hmm. called me, and he's like, "Well, send it to me," and, and I did. And Finish Line was on that. It was. It was, it was a lot slower tempo. What did you kind of hear? Um, I just heard a great, beautiful song. I mean, uh, it was fun to just get you to just ramp things up and and then just once you felt comfortable with, at that level, then just getting performances, you know, out of you. And, you know, my favorite verse in this song is that breakdown verse, you know, the, where everything just kind of drops out but yeah just getting you know performances mm -hmm. that's that's making a good record it's about and telling a story mm -hmm. you know how to you know sing straight so that the story can be heard that, that yeah. That was a great lesson. Mike was saying, if you're telling a story, just like sing it straight. Like listen to Williams or like Cheryl Crow, just like how they have that kind of straighter tone. Yeah, and will help. I mean, she could do, a, she's very talented. She could do a lot of good things with her voice, but it was just sometimes too much of it. And then the story wasn't getting told. So it was just simplifying mm -hmm. it and, and building the strength and confidence, really. That, that was another big yeah. thing that you taught me is that like look at look at your song like as a whole and then what line is like the most important line like what word is the most important add like the inflection or like the tone change like add it there so then it makes sense like don't do it throughout the whole song because then all the lines kind of There's no way to go. are created equally yeah so and well, that really did help tell yeah. the story not all lines are created <laughs> yeah quote me on that so this is Good Time Gone. Is this the one that we like spent, we like, okay, I like it rock, but then we like, ooh, Andrew was playing oh, the banjo. Yeah. Oh or something. yeah. Like, Hold it on a second. We spent a whole night just exploring, doing it more kind of country. And it was like one of those songs that worked both ways mm -hmm. or could have gone several ways, but ended up, Rock was the best. 
sometimes you have to find out what you don't want to find what you do want and that was worth going and exploring but then at the end of the day uh, the rock the rock one was the way to go and you really taught me um, the importance of craftsmanship of a song, how to craft a song. Because for me, I feel like I write so much, I would just write a song like on a piece of paper and then put it in a pile and then maybe play it for somebody at some point. But Mike's like, wait, take that song and you know, maybe we wanna take this chorus and put it at the end. And just like the little tweaks that he did, like made them come alive. That was a very valuable lesson uh, for me to learn. I've been working with her for three years, and now she's on tour with me. And I go, I, this is before the show, at 6.30 I go out to my diesel, I train, I do the, the unboxing workout, and then I go and I watch Jay perform. And it's still, um, there's just something in her songs and in her performance and in her voice, it just uh, makes me want to listen, it makes me want to watch. It makes me feel, and it makes me think, and it makes me want to write. It's just very inspiring. It's also very inspiring to work with an artist who has maybe some uh, qualities that you don't have yet, or you want to have, or you want to... Uh, I mean, she's a prolific songwriter. She wrote, she's written more songs since we stopped this project than I've written in the last, th you know, three or four years. So it's kind of like, she's kind of making me look bad. <laughs> so this last song, um, it's very special to me. It's called Bridges. This is a perfect power ballad. You know, let's make it rock. You know, it's, I wanted to have American, early American influences, country and blues and stuff, but I really wanted at, at the peaks t to rock. And, uh, but also just tell this beautiful story. And, uh, you know, it's just, she's a storyteller. And, and uh, that's sort of the best artists we've ever had have just been simple storytellers. Thank you.